check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, Are You Nest Eagle Talk, uh, where we cover hot topics that have happened over a bit of time. It's been a while since the last time we did this, so we have a good amount of topics to cover. Um, I'm Kinley. I'm Jordan Charlie. I'm Mox and Glosson. I'm Navari Solomon. I'm Kimberly Smith. I'm Wesley Price. All righty, and the first topic is now that the vaccine is, um, it can be given to anyone 16 and up. And I actually got an email this morning that the school here at Reinhardt is letting people take the Moderna vaccine, I think next week sometime. So uh, I'd like to open the floor to anyone and see if they've had the vaccine, if you've had the virus, let's just talk about it. Um, I haven't, um, I haven't had the vaccine, but um, you know, at first when the whole vaccine was like talking about coming out, I was kind of skeptical about if I wanted to take it or not. But my mom recently just got the vaccine and um, I don't know, my mom is kind of like a very strong person. So if I see my mom go through something and I, I think she can do it, then that kind of like gives me the confidence. So, I, I mean, I feel like I will take it. But like I said, at first I was I was a little skeptical about it. And I was like, I didn't, I kind of really didn't want to take it, but I wouldn't have a problem taking it. Mox and Wesley, you have anything to say? Yeah. Um... I got I had COVID way back, way way back, like before it got it became really uh, serious. Um, you know, it was way back. Actually, I think over a year ago now. Yeah, over a year ago, my whole wrestling team got it at my high school. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of still controversy going around the the uh, the um, vaccine, um, and I I would say I have a pretty strong immune system um but um yeah there's just there's a lot of controversy going around so i'm a little iffy about it i think that's everyone's problem they don't know who to trust like whether to trust the vaccine or not because um everyone you know places have have the vaccine but it seems to be breaking out in other countries and some places still in america so i feel like eventually it will be mandatory. So people don't have to, you know, wear masks and feel more comfortable. But I feel like it's something we got to get accustomed to and just feel safe and, you know, trust that it's in the best interest of the people. Yeah, I definitely think it'll become a thing, like a seasonal thing. Like, you know, you gotta get your flu shot every fall or whatever. So it's starting to be like that. Kimberly, I know you recently got yours. Which one did you get again? And can you share your experience? I think I got the Moderna one. Yeah, it was easy. It was just one prick in the shoulder and then it was done. I was there for probably about 15 minutes. Okay. All right. Well, moving on, I think uh, some buzz is in the news. Little Nas X shared his new music video for his song, uh, Montero. I think that's how I say that, right? Um, did anyone see it? What are your thoughts? Because it's, it's a little controversy. Would anyone like to share? Um, well, I actually didn't see like the whole music video. I just seen like the, um, the, I guess the clip of him dancing on like the devil or whatever. And I mean, it, that, I don't want to say it like, it didn't disturb. Well, it kind of did disturb me, but the way I look at it, I mean, he's doing whatever he does, I guess, for, for industry and for entertainment. So, I mean, at the end of the day, that's how he makes his money. I mean, I personally don't, you know, support it, but it's not my decision at the end of the day. So, I mean. Yeah, I was definitely thinking about, because he got famous off of the whole Old Town Road, like that was like mm -hmm. big. And so I definitely think he's still trying to keep up with the fame and trying to make, you know, controversy to keep mm -hmm. up with that. And then he he has those, they sold out with the Nate, uh, the Satan Nike shoes and he was getting, you know, beef for that too. So anyone else have thoughts on it? I always wonder like when this kind of stuff happens where like people's teams are, like, their PR team and stuff. Cause I feel like some of the stuff is just like so out of left field that I'm surprised that anyone would be like, yeah, that's a good idea. Like go ahead. 
the shoes that um got released are supposed to be like a trolling like with the video and the purpose behind the video even though i know like in chicago like you were saying it's disturbing like when you're just looking at it like the naked eye you don't know what he's doing or why he's doing that the shoes included but it's supposed to be like versus like the the gay community because you know they'll say especially religious people like if you're if you're if you're like someone of the same sex you're going to hell so that was the the meaning behind the video and the shoes were like him trolling like it's him like advocating for the gay community because he was saying people already say if you like someone of the same sex you're going to hell so then when he released the video now people are angry and he was like he just doesn't understand but um i feel like it's a it's a especially in america it's just a it's kind of a tough you know subject for people to see especially with the fame that he got from old town road so like you said i wonder where his team is and but i i also understand him trying to advocate for you know the gay community because he said that his whole childhood he didn't feel confident you know coming out or being who he was so i applaud him for you know the courage that he took to do that i think that's a really good point too because i feel like everyone you know expresses their feelings in a different way and you know like how you stand up for something is going to be different how like versus like how someone else stand up for something so I also think that's like something important that you mentioned as well. I definitely think part of the controversy is that with Old Town Roads, it was really, really popular with kids and like they play it in gymnasiums and all that stuff. And so now that he's doing this, it's kind of like, whoa, I thought you were for this. And so I think definitely people are worried about like having their seven year old watch it. But I mean, it's the parents' responsibility to make sure that their kids are watching something and not little nods. So. Um, watch them, what do you think? Yeah, I heard about this video. I didn't really want to watch it because of I, I heard about the content that was in it. Um, so I wasn't very interested in watching it. Um, but even hearing about it, I agree with Navari. It, it's very disturbing. Um, uh, I did not know that he was trying to advocate for the homosexual community um, with that video. So that's new, um, but that's, uh, I just, I don't really know what to think about it. It's, it was out of left field, like I think Jordan said. All right, so let's move on. So uh, it is the last day of March, but March Madness is still starting to come to a close, but there was a big controversy with the girls and the boys um, facilities. They had workout stuff because they were in the bubbles, what everyone was calling it. And the girls only had like, I think some yoga mats and some small weights and the boys had this very large room of weights and exercise stuff. And they got called out in the media and it was eventually fixed, but there's still a lot of sexism in sports. And so we thought we'd cover that a little bit because we missed it. Um, anyone have thoughts? I know some, we have some sports players in here. Would you guys like to comment on the situation? Uh, I definitely think uh, that it's, it's unfair and sexist. Um, I'm the type of athlete where I look at it as, you know, if you're an athlete, you're an athlete. It don't matter if you're a, a guy or a woman. Like, we should all get the same treatment. Like, if you're going to give the guys, you know, all this, all these things that they had in their hotel rooms, I feel like the, the women should get it too because at the end of the day, we do the same workouts. We get up at the same times. Um put in the same amount of hours. So I, I definitely do think that it's unfair and I'm glad, you know, it got called to attention and they fixed it. But yeah, I definitely thought in the beginning it was it was unfair. Cause like I said, athletes are all athletes. We do the same thing, so. Yeah, um, Chicago, I agree with you. You know, like you, like you said, you know, I feel like everyone should be equal and we should be treated the same. And I also find it funny because at first, like with the NCAA, they were saying that, you know, that men's basketball just pulls in more money than women's basketball but then after they you know they made the issue known they fixed it so I just don't I just feel like you know it could be fixed at every level and it's just people try and put boundaries up and try and be sexist but I feel like we can address it at every and level. also I don't really understand why they just didn't do it in the first place because they I mean we live in the age of social media you're gonna get called out it's pretty obvious did you just expect the girls just to sit there with their yoga mats and dumbbells and be like, okay, this is fine. Like, I guess this is how it is. Like, they're gonna take pictures and call them out. And look at the boys and be like, well, they got all this stuff. I only got, you know, a shirt. So and I, I really don't see why it started in the first place. 
I think it's super sad that this is something they even had to correct because there was literally just like sheet between the boys and the girls. So like, how did they expect them not to see their whole weight room and the girls literally had nothing? And then they were saying it was a spacious issue. Well, they had plenty of space. So I feel like it's really sad and, you know, it just there's also issues with like food, like the boys got a buffet and like they were able to eat together and the girls got like little containers and they eat in the room by themselves. And so, uh, Moxon, what do you think? Yeah, well, for starters, the NCAA, as I'm sure uh, some of y'all know, it's just a big mess. I mean, the the entire board is, I mean, we, we've seen so many problems with them in basketball and football and a bunch of other sports. And this is no exception. Just because the girls' basketball doesn't bring in more money than, like Wes was saying, oh, it doesn't bring in more money than, than uh, the men's basketball, that doesn't mean that they should be treated differently, obviously. So it's just, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. I didn't see, I, I think I looked up a few of the pictures and I was like, man, just, I mean, I know that they don't bring in as much money, but that doesn't mean that they should get different locker rooms and, you know, different equipment and stuff like that. So it's just, I am not a, not a big fan of the current state of the NCAA, even though I love watching March Madness and I love watching, um, especially college football, but man, just inexcusable as usual for the NCAA. Definitely yeah. agree. Yeah. There's also like, I also saw something that one of the girls, she's suing them, not for the whole March Madness thing, but to make money, like, like a sponsorship because she's got a lot, like a big platform, like a lot of people follow her mm-hmm. and she could get like some, I don't really know what it's called, like an influencer type thing and make money for herself, but they won't let them. So that's also well, a big issue too. I know who you're talking about and she has like over a million TikTok followers and TikTok also has like a fund. Um, It's like the creator fund where you can make money from your TikToks. And so I don't know if it's, she's not allowed to keep that money or I'm sure she's making a ton of money in general from her social media. But since she's a player, I think they're meaning she's not allowed to have any of it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so unfair because like it's her money and she's making it, you know, like it has nothing to do with basketball it's her personal platforms yeah with the ncaa you're not allowed to make money off your image like at all until 2023 so that's why it's like that so like once 2023 hits you can actually make money off your image i actually did the it was that in one of miss king's classes before it was a also it was also a case um before this one um i don't know if y'all know a guy on youtube his name is called uh destroying he was a uh, he's a college football punter a punter, uh, well he was and he was at UCF and they actually said the same thing about him. He was making a lot of YouTube videos, um, and the NCAA like cut off all of his um like they said he can't he can't make money from the YouTube videos and he has a a crazy amount of followers and and subscribers on YouTube. But they like they made him stop. They made him choose between YouTube and football, and it's crazy that it's like that because like Wes said, I mean. It's, it's their money you should, you know, spend a house. I don't think, think at the end of the day, they're still college students. They still got to pay for, even if their college is paid for, they still got to pay for gas and their clothes and a little bit yeah. of food and stuff. And so, I mean, and with being an athlete, especially like big level SEC, D1, all that, you don't have time to have a job in with along with trying to get education and playing on a team. So you got to make some money somewhere. And so I definitely, you know, do what you gotta do. So, but I also think it's weird because it's like they're probably making money off her image. So why can't she make money yeah, off? They them? sell the posters and the jerseys with like their name on the back of it. Like it's just crazy. There's yeah. the reason that they do that or that they have did that in the past is to keep the amateurism about college basketball because you know, like once you that's why everyone wants to go pro. Well, not wants to go pro like for money. But if you make college about as money as well, it'll like really kind of be a power struggle and it'll just really change people's motives and stuff. That's why they have had it like that, but it's changing soon. Um, so to end it off, there was some uh, shootings in the past weeks. Um, there's one, I think Colorado, then there's one right here in Cherokee County where a few Asian women were killed and there's been a big push on social media to stop Asian hate. Anyone share their thoughts? 
for what is happening in our world. Craziness is always craziness. Like, I really don't see how somebody could just like wake up in the morning and like think those type of thoughts. Like, I'm gonna go after you know this kind of people, but this world, you know, it, it surprises me almost every day. So, but it's it's ridiculous. I feel like that's it's a 2021, and we shouldn't be doing stuff like this still. I think it's super sad because I feel like sometimes we feel like we've come further and then it's like something like this happens and you're just like, what are people doing? And it's just like, how are we supposed to stop this and improve it? Because I feel like it's happened so often, you know? Cam, do you have anything to say? I have a lot to say, but we probably don't have enough time. Um, For reference, the Asian the amount of Asian hate has gone up 140% since probably 2009, I believe. And it's all because of Trump. I'm blaming Trump for this because he 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 is the reason why. The Him calling it the Chinese virus and people, his followers going after everybody who's Asian because they blame them for the virus. And most people who are getting Asian hate are elderly Asian people. Like recently in New York, I think it was somebody kicked a Filipino woman in the stomach and then repeatedly stomped on her head. And then the people who worked in the hotel right outside of where it was happening, closed the door on her while she was like laying on the ground in critical condition. So I just think this, this shouldn't be happening. Obviously it shouldn't be happening, but I think it's just deplorable behavior. Yeah, and it's definitely, I'm so tired of seeing every time there's a shooting and it's a young white guy. They're always like, oh, he just, he has this problem. No, he's, he had a bad day. That's what they said about this guy. He had a bad day. You, when you have a bad day, you don't go shoot up a spa. You just go home and take a shower and bed. Like, it's ridiculous that they're making excuses for these people to act out in certain ways. So I think we're, I felt like we were moving in a good direction just a little bit. And then like how Jordan said, we get, you know, we take a hundred steps back. Um, Moxon, do you have anything? Yeah, Navari hit the nail on the head. Just, I, I swear every time we turn, we turn around the corner after, you know, crazy 2020 and then something like some tragedy like this happens and it's just, it's crazy. And um, I just, I don't even know what to say about everything that's been going on the, uh, these past, you know, ever since the virus hit and then this crazy election. And then of course we start this year off and it's like, Oh, you know, 2021, let's, let's start to rebuild. Let's start to uh, get out of this slump that was 2020. And then, you know, th this tragedy happens. So it's, um, it really hurt my heart to see that that had happened. Um, you know, my mom read out the news and I was in bed and I was like, what, what happened? And um, so it was just, it's very saddening. So my prayers go out to all the families that were affected um, by this. Um, also, I feel bad for, you know, just the whole Asian community prayers out to all the families affected and everyone involved. Cause I saw a girl our age got shot in the face just walking down the street. So I just, you know, I hope they figure out the issue and I hope we don't have a reoccurring issue just with someone of a different color or a different, you know, a situation. So I hope it just gets handled, you know, and we address it as a country. Yes, let's hope that we can come through together as one country and really solve this out. And uh, that's all we have for today for a Eagle Nest Talk <laughs> uh, Weekend Wrap-Ups. And we'll see you guys next time.